right, so the discount rate, uh, you may have heard about the discount rate in the news. Uh, whenever you see in the headlines that the Fed has gotten together and they're going to cut rates or they're going to increase rates, what they're talking about is the discount rate, okay? Let me give you a definition real quick and then we'll keep talking about this. The discount rate is the interest rate the, that the central bank charges banks that borrow reserves from them. Okay, here's how it goes. The idea goes like this, is that if, if a bank, let's say that this is the level of required reserves, but their level of re reserves is only here. Okay, so they are missing a little bit of money. What they can do to make up the, the missing money, because they'll get in big trouble if they don't, uh, if they don't meet, usually every 24 hours, so let's say by midnight. The bank will get in big trouble if they don't have all their required reserves in their account with the Fed by midnight. So let's say that on one particular day, they did some lending, uh, they received payments on some of their loans, they received deposits, but after the whole day is over or near the end of the day, they don't quite have enough money to cover their required reserves. Well, the Fed is gonna, is gonna get really upset with them. They're probably gonna fine them or they're gonna, they're gonna take some sort of uh, disciplinary action against the bank. It could be that the bank, after it gets in trouble several times, the Fed can say, you can't be a bank anymore. We're gonna have you, uh, we're gonna have a bigger bank take you over and you don't get to be a bank anymore. So banks wanna be very careful. Uh, they don't wanna finish out the day without covering their required reserves. So one of the things that a bank can do is they can borrow money from the Fed to cover their required reserves. So they'll borrow the money overnight to make sure they cover their reserves and then hopefully the next day they'll get all their deposits and everything up to where they can cover their uh, minimum requirement. Okay. Now, when the Fed loans the bank money, the interest rate that the Fed charges that bank is called the discount rate. Now, I want you to know on the side that banks can also borrow money from each other. If this is a bank that has excess reserves and this is a bank that, that isn't covering their uh, required reserves, this bank can borrow money from this bank out of their excess reserves to cover their reserve requirement and they will have to pay interest to this other bank. Okay, so there's all kinds of interesting wheeling and dealing and borrowing and, and interest paying going on among banks. Okay, it's big, big business. But when a bank borrows money from the Fed, the interest rate that they pay is called the discount rate. And what the Fed can do is they can raise the interest rate and they can lower the interest rate uh, for the interest that they charge to banks. Now, here's the interesting thing that happens, is when the interest rate is low, when the discount rate is lower, what banks will do is, if they can loan the money out at a higher interest rate to borrowers, they don't mind eating into their, res their required reserves to loan that money out to people who are gonna pay them higher interest. They're thinking to themselves, well, we're going to make so much money in interest off of our borrowers that we'll just borrow money from the Fed to cover our required reserves. And so when the discount rate is lower, banks are more likely to lend out more money.
And when the discount rate is higher, banks are thinking, well, we're not going to make very much money on lending. We don't want to borrow from the Fed, so they, they lend out less money. So the, the basic summary goes like this, is that a higher discount rate leads to uh, less lending and a lower discount rate from the Fed typically leads to more lending by banks, okay? And so what I want to do now is I want to I draw out, just like I did with the open market operations, uh, I want to uh, split the board in half and I want to describe what happens in a bank or, or what happens in the economy when the Fed increases or decreases the interest rate, okay? So uh, decrease or the discount rate. So we'll have decrease the discount rate and we'll have over here increase the discount rate, okay? Now, let me give you the summary real fast so that you can understand what's gonna happen to the money supply. When the discount rate is lower, banks will lend out more money. They're more willing to lend. And when they lend out more money, that triggers money creation, right? We already learned in the money creation, the chain reaction, it's because banks are lending out money, people are borrowing the money, spending it, and then other people are depositing it in other banks. So we know that an increase in lending always results in an increase in the money supply. So a decrease in the discount rate basically results in an increase in the money supply. But an increase in the discount rate, that means that banks have to pay more money for the money they borrow from the Fed, so they're less likely to lend more money out. Okay, so they're gonna lend less money. When they lend less money, there's not gonna be as much of an increase in the money supply. In fact, we're gonna have money destruction and we'll have a decrease in the money supply. So in your mind, just understand that a decrease in the discount rate always results in an increase, well, generally, they hope it results in an increase in the money supply, and an increase in the discount rate leads to a decrease in the money supply. But let's see how this happens. Okay, so here's what happens. Step one, the Fed lowers or cuts the discount rate. All right, when the Fed cuts the discount rate, what happens is banks borrow more reserves. So what will happen over here is the bank reserves will actually go up. We'll have an increase in reserves. Banks will now have more excess reserves because they are borrowing from the Fed. It's okay, they know they're gonna have to pay interest on it, but it's such a low rate they're gonna make way more money on the money that they lend out. So now they lend out more money, but remember, what is an increase in the bank reserves? Remember that the, the monetary base is currency and bank reserves. So if the Fed is putting money into the bank's reserve account, that means it's an increase in the monetary base. So the monetary base increases, This is by definition, because banks are borrowing money that's going into their reserves from the Fed, an increase in reserves is synonymous with an increase in the monetary base. Now, banks are gonna lend out their excess reserves, and then of course this is going to trigger the money creation process, increasing the money supply in the economy. All right, so now let me draw you a diagram representing this. So the first thing that happens is the Fed decreases the discount rate. Now that it's cheaper for banks to borrow from the Fed, they will. So they borrow money from the Fed, and the Fed puts the money directly into their reserves. So we're going to have an increase in bank reserves. Now, an increase in bank reserves, remember that the monetary base is made up of currency and bank reserves. So an increase in bank reserves means that there is an increase in the monetary base. And now the Fed is hoping that everybody will do what they're motivated to do. It'll trigger the money creation process and we will result in an increase in the money supply.
Now I want to remind you that what happens when the money supply increases is, right, money creation process, increase in money supply. In the money market, the vertical money supply curve is going to shift to the right. Okay, vertical money supply curve, here's money demand. The money supply curve is going to shift to the right and it's going to lower the interest rate. So interest rates will lower because the money supply increased. Okay, so um, now we're really going to focus on that in the next segment uh, or in the next set of lessons, but uh, just keep in mind that an increase in money supply is going to lead to a decrease in interest rates. And when interest rates are lower, people tend to spend more money. So the Fed is doing this on purpose. They're decreasing the discount rate so that they can increase the money supply, so that they can influence the economy and manipulate the aggregate market. Okay? All right, so that is uh, the Fed decreasing the discount rate. Alternatively, another choice is the Fed could choose to increase the discount rate. And when they do that, it's basically just going to be the opposite of everything that happens here, and it's going to result in a decrease in the money supply. But let me show you over here what happens with bank reserves. Uh, when the Fed uh, increases the discount rate or raises the discount rate, that's the first thing that's going to happen. All right. So what's going to happen is when they raise the discount rate, that makes it more expensive for banks to borrow from the Fed. In fact, any money that the, that the banks have already borrowed from the Fed are, is now going to cost more money for them to keep. So what's going to happen is the banks are going to say, well, we don't want extra money. We're not really going to earn much uh, money. People aren't going to borrow at a higher rate. And therefore, we don't want to have any extra money. So what they do is they give all that money back to the Fed. They don't borrow as much money from the Fed. And they just try to maintain their required reserves. And so when the Fed raises the discount rate, banks are now not, uh, less motivated to borrow into their reserves. And borrow, banks are now going to borrow less in reserves. So now, when the banks borrow less in reserves, they have less money in their reserves. They do have their required reserves, but they don't, they're not adding to that. And so, what that's going to result in is a decrease in the monetary base. Because the monetary base has now decreased, this is now going to uh, restrict lending. And because there's going to be less lending, and not only less lending, but they're, going to, they're not going to lend the money that they receive. You know, borrowers are paying them monthly or every day sometimes. Okay? And so when they receive that money back, instead of lending it out again to, to keep the money creation process going, they're going to put it in and cover their required reserves. And what that's going to do is it's going to trigger the money destruction process and it's going to decrease the money supply. And so now let me give you a, a diagram. It's basically the opposite of what you see over here. So when the Fed increases the discount rate, and they're doing that on purpose, they are increasing the discount rate. This is, in a way, it's an arbitrary decision, okay? But they have a purpose for their arbitrary decision. They are arbitrarily deciding, hey, we're going to increase the discount rate. But the reason they're doing it is because they want to decrease the money supply. Let me remind you one more time that this main job of monetary policy that the Fed takes on, in monetary policy, they are accomplishing one thing. They are managing the money supply. They are either increasing the money supply or decreasing the money supply, and they're using three tools to do it. In this case, they increase the discount rate. Banks now do not want to borrow, so that leads to a decrease in bank reserves. Since bank reserves are now lower, we now have a decrease in the monetary base, 
and a decrease in the monetary base is then going to trigger money destruction. Ultimately, we will have a decrease in the money supply, which is what the Fed wanted in the first place. Now, it doesn't always work as perfectly as the Fed wants it to. And we've had problems economically in the past when this whole process didn't work the way they wanted it to work. Because if people are too excited about spending, then increasing the discount rate might not actually result in a decrease, enough of a decrease in the monetary base and a decrease in the money supply. Okay? And so once the money supply decreases, that's ultimately going to lead to an increase in interest rates in the money market. And then we're going to see in the next set of lessons what that ultimately affects. Okay? And now we're going to move on to the third tool of monetary policy that the Fed uses, which is the reserve ratio.